do think that one of the key trends that we're seeing is that investors are really catching up. So, you know, if I, if I had to look back, you know, 10 years ago, you would probably have the largest investors um, who understood the value of non-financial information and, and non-financial performance. And uh, with COVID, we have definitely seen those investors who were previously very skeptical, uh, who are now jumping on board and um, are putting ESG, uh, you know, as I wouldn't say as priority yet, uh, but it's gaining much greater focus for them. Um, we've definitely seen um, increase in the dollars or money flowing into the ESG funds and ESG funds overall have outperformed um, during COVID. So what that told investors is that, and, and I think that, that sort of provided a bit more clarity also on the fact that ESG is not here necessarily to draw the top line, but to protect your bottom line. It is about risk management and it is about awareness of the non-financial risks that ultimately lead to potentially financial risks or, or impact on the financial performance. And I think many investors who previously didn't see that as an, as an opportunity have now, let's say, woken up to it. So we're definitely seeing more investors looking into ESG a bit more. We're definitely seeing more investors subscribing to proxy advisors and more proxy advisors and subscribing to ESG rating agencies as well. We are seeing increase in ESG initiatives um, for investors, ESG associations and memberships of these associ associations. Um, so, so I do think that overall the, the trends are shifting towards you know, putting focus on ESG. But at the same time, and, and this, is, uh, this is a very important point, ESG might actually at some point become mainstream and we won't be talking about ESG anymore. We, we will be just talking about investment. It'll be natural you know, part of, of how you think about your investment and how companies think about their business. And I think that you know, from our perspective, that's actually the true value of ESG. That's a great question. I do definitely see an increase in, um, on one hand, confusion around what investors truly want, and on the other hand, more hunger for information around non-traditional IR areas, let's call them. And those non-traditional definitely um, relate to <laughs> environmental, social, and governance aspects. Um, I do also believe that investor relations are actually becoming not just shareholder communicators or or the the facil facilitators of you know the shareholder um, expectations and, and preferences but much wider stakeholder preferences so so I do believe that investor relations now to actually be successful uh, they need to understand that it's not just investors anymore that impact companies access to capital there are many other stakeholders and I don't necessarily mean you know your suppliers your your customers your employees but rather those ESG rating agencies, those proxy advisors, but also ESG activists like NGOs and civil societies that are increasingly um, having an influence on how investors make decisions. And, and therefore, it is very important to understand these, these, this whole ecosystem and understand um, how these stakeholders make decisions about the company, how they assist the company, how they engage with the company. Um, and therefore, IROs are you know, having lots of questions about how to do that, again, in an efficient manner, because they're also just people. <laughs> uh, and we need to be able to really uh, allocate our resources in an <laughs> you know, efficient manner. I always say, have your own story and, and come up with your own story, otherwise someone else will. And that's how you can address the backlash, but that's how you can also address potentially some rumors about you as a company or something that an activist might come up with. Um, they, they love to use the media. Um, so if a company has strong business strategy, if they have a strong story behind it, if they have good rationale, and if they have strong relationships and, um, and trust with the market and with investors, um, they be, that's basically the strongest defense they can they can use. Now, in terms of the ESG backlash, um, I do think that it's uh, largely political. It is used for for political agendas, um, and obviously you would have heard about uh, you know the the events in in the United States and Florida and Texas where potentially some investors might now get punished if they include ESG in their uh, decision making. Again, this is highly highly politicized. Um, we obviously were yet to see, uh, you know, where this will well, this will lead to. But at large, if you think about investors across Europe, uh, given the legislation that we have here, if you look at investors in Australia, uh, in APEC region, 
um, we're not sort of hearing this this, this <laughs> you know sort of rumor or, or agenda. So um, I do think that it's potentially you know uh, it, it sounds like very vocal, very noisy, very strong and, and significant. But in the grand scheme of things, and in the sort of when you look at the whole whole world and, and how investors make decision, I do think that this is a short-term glitch. Let's call it. It's a tough question, um, but look, I I do think again to my previous point around you know have your own story and and make sure that it's that you're confident in telling it and that it's a strong story. What supports a strong story are metrics and targets. You, you don't want to sound fluffy to the market. You don't want to sound like there's only qualitative types of disclosure. Um, you really want to back it up by, by numbers, by, by facts, um, and by metrics and targets. That's it's as easy or as difficult as, as it is. Um, look, I, I know it's not always the, um, the smoothest um, and, and the, you know, the easiest way to go, but just like in your financial performance where you're setting some targets on, on your financials, right, um, it does make sense to do that on, on the non-financial if you really consider um, certain areas of ESG as important. And the second step then is to really link it to executive remuneration because what doesn't get measured and what doesn't get paid for doesn't get done, <laughs> that's what we say. Um, so, so I do think that that really uh, cements your your story. Um, if if you truly believe in you know those those material and relevant areas of of your ESG, and if you're incorporating that in your business strategy.